Juan, thank you for being here. Of, of course. course you're here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course, and just so you know, Juan is the visual and audio talent and force behind Design Your Day. Wink. So yes. And you know, Juan and I were just talking over in our trend series about connecting with couples and, and up and coming trends, but I wanted to get more specific and more yeah. practical, which yeah. you're so good at, <laughs> about, about um, you know, for a couple who hasn't ever planned a wedding before, hasn't ever worked with yeah. a professional videographer, what are some things that they, that they don't think of? Yeah, and, uh, and of course, like how you're saying, like it, most people this being their first wedding, they don't know what to look for or what's good, you know, wedding filmmaking versus what's not very good. Um, and one thing that I like to educate people on is that there's, of course, many different ways that you can approach a wedding film and many different ways or products that you can get, you know, whenever you're um, researching this. And so I think what something that I want to educate people on is there's mainly two different approaches to wedding filmmaking. That is the storytelling uh, filmmaking approach versus the montage um, wedding filmmaking approach. And the difference, the differences are this. Storytelling, it's a little bit more intentional. There's a backbone to the wedding film itself. Um, whether it's narration from the couple's vows or maybe it's the officiant who is really just kind of setting the tone of, you know, the day and the couple and who they are together or somebody's speech, you know, that being the backbone of, you know, the, um, the wedding film and then using clips throughout the day to complement, you know, that, uh, that narration um, that requires a little more intention and it's a little more thought out. As opposed to the montage approach, which is you know just taking a lot of cool clips and and putting you know some uh, uh, music to it, and a lot of people like to say that this is kind of like a music video approach to wedding films. Interesting. Yeah, and they're both great. You know, I think you know whether you like one or the other, I think it's just important to know the difference. You know, and to at least because uh, once you know the difference, you know what you want, what you prefer. And when you know what you want and you, what you prefer, you'll be a lot more happier with your purchase and with the uh, filmmaker that you decide to go with. Uh, for me, I lean on that storytelling approach where I like to, um, like how we said in the trends video, I like to get to know the couples, make sure that I'm representing them you know, the best that I can. And this involves me getting to know their family culture, getting to know just their lives. You know, That way throughout the wedding, I can listen to those little sound bites that I'm going to be using as that narration for the wedding day itself, um, telling the story, the love story of the day. Um, so that's definitely one thing that, you know, I see that sometimes people don't think about when it comes to their wedding film. Another thing is that um, audio is half of a wedding film. You know, audio is half, you know, of the wedding filmmaking experience. You know, of course, it's all visual, but the audio is what immerses you into the wedding day. And um, something that I'm trying to break away my couples from is, and you, I'm sure you've seen this a lot, is, you know, and I did this at, at my wedding, is whenever we said our vows, we were just repeating the officiant. Yeah. We, were, we were just going, you know, like, I, like, he would say, all right, repeat after me. I want, and I would say, I want, you know, take Rebecca, take Rebecca, you know, and, you know, that's beautiful. And I think those are very great vows. But I think... What most people don't think about is if you want your story to be told, I would encourage couples to narrate their story so that I can have that audio, so their filmmakers can have that audio via and through their wedding vows. And so um, that's just one area that I know couples uh, maybe don't necessarily think about, you know, when it comes to having their story being told. Um, one one very easy way that you can do that is with custom vows. Or maybe if you don't want custom vows and you want to keep the ceremony very traditional, you can write letters to each other. Or you know, and and I can as a filmmaker, I can record you reading those letters um, because again, you know, uh, visuals and you know what the camera gets is very important. But audio is what complements it and what carries. The flow of that wedding day, uh, whether it's you know the vows or whether it's the toast uh, or what the officiant says, and so 
that's one thing that I would encourage couples just to do a little more, um, you know, research or think think about a little bit more. That way, whenever their wedding story is being told, uh, they can have that option of you know um, adding that extra layer of uh, of story, you know, to their day. You know, that's so lovely that you mentioned that. I wouldn't have. I know it's obvious. I didn't think of that. But when you're when you're talking about videography, I wouldn't have connected that to how I'm doing my vows that I'm repeating something. What great insight. So now that we know what couples probably don't think about in terms of videography, can you give us a few things that they may get tripped up on or have barriers to or hurdles to in any in in, at any step in the process? Yeah, I, I would have to say one thing that I see a lot, you know, as far as like um, a hurdle or a problem that I see is it's and this happens this happens a lot and it's very natural you know I do it sometimes too but whenever we're d- at the couple's photos time of the wedding timeline or like say we're doing an engagement or save the date you know film it's very natural for uh, the couples to be still in front of the camera um, for example I may you know direct a couple or the photographer may direct the couple go ahead and stand next to each other and you know the couple the couple goes in and they they, they hold each other and they smile and look in the camera and that's you know and like I said it's very natural like you're taking photos it's it's everyone I, f- I feel like that's I don't know if it's like a, a primal instinct for us to do that or like what that is but everyone does it and it's totally natural but one thing that I, the solution that I have for that, that I direct my couples with is uh, a couple of things. One is if you don't know what to do with your hands, um, find something to caress. Uh, because, because the main problem that we want to solve is we want to introduce motion into those moments. So if I tell a couple, go ahead and stand right next to each other, you know, um, I never want it to be still. I always want them to be either swaying finding, you know, something to caress with their hands, you know, and it's basically going to be a flirt session. I tell people I <laughs> you know, a flirt session. Y'all are going to, y'all are going to have fun. You're going to tease each other. We're going to really, um, work with your physical, your physical chemistry with one another. And, you know, if, if, if you feel a little nervous, you know, when it comes to that, like, Hey, I totally get it. You know, it's, it's not, it's not every day that you get to practice PDA and somebody, you know, like films it and stuff. Um, so it might be fun. Like, Hey, you know what? Like find some time and practice PDA, you know what I mean? With each other <laughs> and, you know, swaying back and forth, finding something to correct. It's a lot of fun. And that's how I, I think something that I'm going to start telling people is we want that motion because the last thing you want is to feel like, you know, your wedding film came, your wedding film to come back and feel like, you know, like you were just standing there like taxidermy. Like, that's the one thing I don't want my couples to feel like, you know, um, I want them to feel very natural and candid in front of the camera. And that's just something that you can do. You can practice, you know, finding something to caress on each other, practice your physical chemistry with one another. That way, when it's time, you know, you're a little more comfortable with, you know, how um, how you are in front of the camera with your with your partner. Um, I would say another thing is and this cuts back into the audio uh, portion of you know, what I was saying earlier, because audio is very important. Um, And kind of on that same note of like being still in front of the camera, it's not every day that you're in front of like, you know, hundreds of people, you know, and you're having to express your deepest, you know, most like sentimental words to the person that you love. Like that's nerve wracking, you know, I would be nervous too. And what happens a lot is, you know, sometimes people use a lot of verbal fillers or like um or you know sometimes there's pauses throughout the uh, the vows and the speeches and so one thing that I have as a solution for that is go ahead and take some time before the wedding well one you know have have your your vows and your speeches um, already written before before the wedding day Let, let's say a week at the latest right and then two like just practice them, say them, say them in front of the mirror, uh, say them in front of maybe a family member or a friend. Um, if you're not, if you're not too, if you don't care too much to like not to hide them or to um, hold those words back from your partner, I mean, say it to your partner if you want. 
you know, that way when it comes to the wedding day, you are avoiding those verbal fillers. Uh, you're not as nervous because you know what you're going to say. You've, you know, gone through it once or twice, a hundred times maybe. Um, and then that way, it just, like I said, yeah, it, it brings the nerves down. You feel a lot more confident when you share them. And then it helps me as a videographer, as a filmmaker, to capture that, that confidence, that, you know, that assurance whenever someone is delivering those very important, lovely, loving and sentimental words. You know, I think it just translates better in camera. So uh, those two things. One, you know, uh, and introducing motion into, you know, um, into the wedding film. So always finding something to do with one another as far as your physical chemistry. And then two is having your vows written and then also practicing, you know, delivering them. That way you can avoid those verbal fillers when it's time. I love that. It's like, you know, just getting out the, the nerves beforehand yeah. over and over and over and over until you're not thinking about it anymore. Right. You're just feeling it in the moment. So authentic. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I, would, I would argue that that helps you and makes you so much more present than having to think about what's coming up next or like what you know you're going to say after this you know after one sentence or the other mm -hmm. because you're not thinking about it anymore because you've practiced it that you're actually experiencing it, it. yeah i love it well one thank you for being here thanks for being so insightful thanks for entertaining at least me and um i i know i know we'll we're working more together. Yeah, I'm excited. So, it's gonna be great. This is gonna be really good. So you can check out more of Juan's work and his packages and services in the links below. And you know, we love to hear your comments and your questions. So what I want you to do here is go practice PDA so you don't look like taxidermy and leave a comment in the links below. Let us know how that worked for you. And we'll see you next time.